Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. Let us observe this FACO surgery under topical anesthesia. This is the main incision with a 2.8 millimeter steel keratome. The cataract is appearing soft because of good red glow, but we will see later that it is quite hard. This is phenocaine to uh, anesthetize the intraocular ruptures. And now, visco fills off the anterior chamber and it is applied over the corneal epithelium for better visibility. And now I am making a side port about 3 o'clock hours away from the main incision. In this case, it is appearing more than 3 o'clock hours. And now, capsulorexis is to be done. I take a uterata forceps. The microscope has step magnification. It is OMS 90 from Topcon. And now I take the uterata forceps, raise a capsular tag and hold this tag and go anticlockwise and do a large rexis. Since the nucleus sclerosis is about grade 4, I do quite a large rexis. Size of this rexis is about 5.75 millimeter. And now, hydrodissection. Hydrodissection is done at multiple points with small alicots or PBSs. And now I gently tap the nucleus and mobilize the nucleus. Inject some visco and now I take two hooks and rotate the nucleus. And now I am going to employ my submarine chalk technique to divide this nucleus into two heminuclei. In submarine chop, we expose the tip a little more and bury the tip just in front of the main incision into the substance of the nucleus, go through the nucleus towards the opposite equator. Here it goes. Some superficial cortical lens matter is removed. This will improve visibility. And now the tip is buried just in front of the main incision and it goes through the substance towards the opposite equator with full ultrasonic energy at in continuous mode at 450 vacuum. And you could see a crack and along the same crack I use the chopper and divide the nucleus. I come to the other side to a sculpt and hold and separate the two heminuclei completely. And now I am um, uh, dividing this nucleus into three pieces. This is own piece. Hold this and divide this. And the pieces are not free. I come to the other heminucleus, didn't get a nice crack, hold this chunk and here I get a nice crack and I get a free nuclear fragment. At this time I came out inject visco. The reason for coming out is the BSS got over and my assistants are using uh, another bottle of BSS. And now 
you can see that on nuclear piece is free, on hemonucleus has got three cracks, none of the pieces are free and we have to manage this nucleus. Yes, we are ready now, go gain into the anterior chamber. This free nuclear piece is caught hold of and it is emulsified. Ultrasonic energy being used is 80 percent, flow rate is 45 ml per minute, vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury. This larger chunk is tilted as I apply a small amount of ultrasonic energy joining the two bands, joining the two fragments. The, the fragments become free and I can emulsify the fragments easily. The anterior chamber is rock steady, there is no surge. The bottle height is about 110 centimeter. And now I used uh, ultrasonic energy to make the pieces separate the other hemonucleus. At this time we must see whether the anti-capsule is coming forward or not. Actually we should develop another eye to look around and on eye or on pair of eyes does the surgery and we should develop another pair of eye to take care of the surroundings. This is very, very important. We have to, in between, we have to see the post capsule whether it is coming forward or not, whether everything is okay or not. All these things have to be absorbed by the subconscious mind and seeing through the subconscious mind, taking care of the situations by the subconscious mind may be called developing another pair of eyes. And now this is a bit of cortex. Yes, most of the, all the cortex is removed, only a small bit of cortex is there. Go through the side foot and remove this cortex, subincisional cortex and a bit of cortex at 9 o'clock. Removed, clean bag now, a small lens matter, yes. And now I have clean anterior chamber clean capsular bag. In this case, see the main incision, it's not good. The main incision, the left side of the main incision has gone towards the cornea. It should not be, it should be a straight line at the limbus. And this has happened because uh, probably the patient was not cooperating well, but that it could not, we cannot give this kind of excuse. We have to make the eyeball stable by some means and do a very nice incision. The lens has gone into the capsular bag. This is SEMA hydrophilic intraocular lens, beautiful lens. Uh, it has gone into the capsular bag. The haptics are three o'clock, nine o'clock or other um, eight o'clock and two o'clock position. And now I go behind the intraocular lens and irrigate some bases into the capsular bag. And thus, all the visco from behind the lens is removed.
Nice. Now, we are towards the end of this surgery. The patient is constantly moving his eye a bit, can't keep his eye uh, in steel position. And now I am removing some cortex, some more cortex using irrigation and aspiration. I use the irrigation behind the lens, aspiration in front of the lens and do a thorough cleaning of visco. If we do a neat job like this, postoperatively the eye is quiet and the patient becomes completely fit in 5 days and we can do a refraction after 7 days. Routinely, I do refraction after seven days and call the patient after three months and after three months another refraction is done and usually there is minor changes in refraction. This is the final lavage. The antichamber is nicely formed by Simcoe. Uh, integrity of all the wounds are checked, few drops of moxie is applied over the ocular surface and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.